Just a long lost look in your eyes Brings out a love that I can't disguise So take me down to the places I've never seen Oh, don't you try to kill me with kind It's just your love that's driving me wild Welcome back, guys. We're here for more LCK 2018 Spring. I am Valdez with me tonight, as always, is Papa Smithy. We get to watch another David versus Goliath matchup. King Zone Dragon X on a huge roll, another 10 games in a row up against the Rocks Tigers. And we get to zoom out a little bit and remember, there's only two weeks of the regular season left. On this day, SKT start the day in seventh. The top five is far from set. The only team guaranteed to be in the playoffs, whether it's the top real playoffs or the relegation playoff, is King Zone, who already are mathematically secured to be top five. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice spot to be in, sitting pretty, but of course they want to go directly to first place. That's when you can sit back, study all the other teams, and have a lot of time to rest and prepare for the finals. But either way, guys, we're going to introduce our teams first with our host, Kim Soo-hyun. The Rocks Tigers doing a lot better this year than most people could have said. Sitting here in fifth place, uh, they haven't looked good in the last couple of games they've played, but they're they're overall a lot better than we expected them to be, Papa. And they need some of those victories because the postseason looked like a formality two weeks ago. 8.4 hit and they have not won a single game. They started off very early. They won the first match day. They had some of the parts to win on 8.4, but not the whole picture couldn't close and then rolled over in what looked like a pretty straightforward series against MVP, blown away by Afrika. They're top five, but I'm sure SKT and other teams around the top five, Jinnah as well, are eyeing the Rocks Tigers as the team most likely to fall out of top five. For sure, definitely the big question mark, the dark horse coming into this one uh, amongst all the other strong teams. I like the little uh, banners or signs we got here showing the roles of each of the players, and the second role is always Phil. Oh my God, they're such team members. Don't see those sort of guys in solo queue <laughs> too often. They're happy to go. Yeah, so we're going to introduce our second team of the night. <laughs> 우승컵을 들어올리게 기대하는 팀, 킹존 드래곤 킹존. We have one of the most dominant teams we've ever had here in LCK. Just looking unstoppable. Every time you watch them, you're like, well, 
they can't do better than that, and then they just impress you on the next time they play. I mean, their goal is to go straight to the final. They are certainly set up to do so. Two match wins this week, and they will guarantee first spot with still a match week left to go. That is dominance that has not been seen since the days of SK Telecom T1 in summer 2015, and they can't match that record. That was 17 and one, mm -hmm. but 16 and two, you have to be a betting man to say anything other than 16-2 being likely for King's Own Dragon X. They've only had a couple of hiccups so far. One of them was with Rascal playing two games in the first match they had up against KSV. And then Rascal playing another two games actually in their matchup against PBQ that they lost 1-2 after Khan had some uh, breathing issues. And so whenever Khan plays the entire series, they always win. And that's a scary thing to mention because he's been popping off, but it seems like anyone on King Zone can pop off on any given day. Khan might just be scaling up on one day and then have Peanut go legendary on Olaf or BDD popping off on the Talia. Everybody can carry on this team. And that's the scary proposition for the Rocks Tigers to consider. The loss to MVP would have been a shock. The loss to Afrika, that one you can understand. They want to play themselves back into form to challenge for top five. And yet you face King Zone Dragon X on first ask and say, are we just going to be 0-6 three eight series in a row? No more defeats is the motto here for the Rocks Tigers. They have gone down to Afrika and of course MVP, that's the big surprise. After defeating KT Rolster 2-0, we were saying, wow, this Rocks Tigers team, they look really good. And then they proved that again against BBQ, but then this inconsistency where they go down to MVP is not something they wanted. They definitely need to win a bunch more games to make it into the playoffs. It's way too competitive at this point. Yeah, we just need to see them win a game on patch 8.4. It so far has been a bogey for this team to try and get over that they haven't been able to realize Will it be today against King Zone? Even a single game would help their game score. Meanwhile, we have King Zone Dragon X who lost to KSV in the first series. Of course, only playing two matches a week. Hard to get out of bottom spots. And then they've been first ever since. First in our hearts, first in the play. They have been fantastic on the season. But will they be able to go flawless? and go 8-0 and o to close out the season. Or are there some incoming hiccups, especially next week? If they win both matches this week, they've got very little to play for next week other than to actually influence other places on the ladder. Yeah, that's the point where you don't really want to show too much. You might begin playing some weird picks or trying out stuff, testing things. We need to stop Peanut from getting started on the Rift. We can see what happens when he begins to snowball with a, a champion like Nidalee or like Olaf. He'll be in your face the entire game, and it's going to be someone's job to stop him. And the starts turn to snowball out of control. One week ago today, went legendary at 16 minutes on the Olaf. 10.5k, the highest of any player in the league. Jungle not often is a role where you have a super high KDA. But Peanut has been on point with his ganks. His numbers, as you would imagine on a winning team, are outstanding. And everyone that goes against him, whether they have a big reputation or not, have a lot to answer for when Peanut gets going. So let's take a look at the mid lane. Lava with massive damage versus BDD with consistency. Overall, Lava doing more of a percentage of his team's damage, but BDD, higher KDA, and the rest of the people on his team are always popping off. So it's it's kind of hard to do that, especially when you're playing stuff like Galio. But again, you get this slide and you say, but how good is BDD? How do you rank him in the top three? When you can tell his assignment is very different to Lava's. If he's on Galio, he knows he has carries on the team. Lava has kind of had to shoulder a lot of burden from his team as he's probably been their most consistent player over 2018. So BDD knows his role, he plays it so well, but it's numbers like this that remind you that his role is also made easier by just the teammates he has to field around him. Yeah, Lava, definitely one of the big surprises we had coming into 2018. We'll see if he can continue to be consistent. His most played overall is Zoe, but that got banned, uh, or rather nerfed to Oblivion, so doesn't have that pocket pick anymore, but Always, I can't seem to beat you. That's Song Yoon talking to Prey. As Prey, it's it's kind of hard to be Prey. It doesn't matter who you are. It's not even about the two v two. Look at the game record: twenty two to three in game score <laughs> over their careers. <laughs> Song Yoon has been around since summer of twenty fifteen. He and I both started in the same season. And when it comes to then the Koo Tigers into the Rocks Tigers, 
Now Longzhu Gaming into King Zone. It has not been fruitful fighting for Sung Yoon to take on the legend from the bot lane in Prey. Yeah, are we gonna get a support slide? The answer is no. <laughs> Just take a look at everybody else. Uh, Sang Yoon here, uh, especially last year, he was the guy that Rocks Tigers always looked forward to. They played around him to have him play hyper carries and to try to carry the team, but uh, certainly some of that weight has been shifted towards the mid lane. Even someone has do been doing a little bit better overall. Rocks Tigers going up against the strongest team in the world. Let's see how it goes going into pick and ban for game one. Right off the bat, we're not gonna be seeing Olaf. Uh, that's not a surprise to literally anyone who has been paying attention nowadays. Peanut will never get that champion uh, for quite a while. Definitely need a multi-step plan to answer it. And we saw that Kingzone were happy to let the Nidalee come back into Olaf in a previous series. On blue side, we get very targeted bans <laughs> as Rocks don't want to deal with the same old stuff when it comes to top lane Jace and the Olaf. The problem with this is, while it will mean a strong first pick, it does mean the answering picks on red side are going to be of extreme high quality. So going for targeted bans against a team like Kingzone that can also play the meta oh so well. It's a scary proposition. Camille, we'll see how high priority that will be this week. Definitely teams that do want to leave it open to QV in the second series and even Khan in this one. It's been moving up and up, bit by bit. And well, you mentioned it. Papa the Prophet, he's back. Camille gonna be banned out here. Don't wanna see that given to Khan or Peanut. I wonder where they will focus the first pick because you're looking at some of the historical records. Nar is a big one for Linderung, but not a first pick. Thinking about first picks in 80 carry rolls, Zaya has been the ultra comfort for the Rocks Tigers. So first pick Zaya, a possibility. Also gonna be likelier with the Varus gone. So Zaya and the likes of Tristana and Caitlyn are the big 80 carries to talk about. Rocks have been on the Callista train a bit too much, and then that train has been derailed mm -hmm. after they tried to make it work even on patch 8.4. We'll see where the reach is, Rise and Azir, all the mid laners are up. When it comes to actually pinching champion pools, more about the mid lane and the jungle, and they will go jungle focus first pick Sejuani against Pina. Yep, always an interesting choice. I mean, Sejuani uh, extremely consistent overall. Looks like uh, it's Key's older brother and aunt came down to watch him. Feels like Key might be jumping on a playmaker then. Seems to be how it goes, Valdez. <laughs> Big Look cheer. this guy, he's happy. He's ready to go. He believes on the Rocks Tigers. Someone needs to. Should also mention that it is former Rocks Tigers versus Rocks Tigers as Peanut, Prey, and Gorilla against their old org. And Peanut will be going on the pick champion. He's going to be jumping on Skarner. I tweeted out a really great play from yesterday's Challengers games where Thresh and Skana, I did not even realize that Skana had the ability to ride the lantern during the suppression. I would love to see Gorilla jump on the Thresh and try to recreate that one. I was speaking to him about the matchup, so I'm sure he's seen it as well. But with the Azir being prioritized, and do notice that Kingzone are one of the few teams in Korea and the world that will take Azir when Rise is open. Most mm. people prefer the Rise, but the Azir team fight impact is what King Zone prize, and they take it knowing that the Rise matchup is inevitable. Yeah, BDD comfortable enough in pretty much any matchup. They would rather counter pick for other matchups, and maybe that's part of the reason why he doesn't shine as much this year. And now we have the 2018 8.1 meta special of Rise Nar for basically winning matchups in almost any scenario. Very, very strong. Do remember that uh, when King Zone played Rocks Tigers in the first round, Robin, that was the Khan Riven game. It was also the Quadra Kill Gangplank game for Khan in game one. So, are we going to roll it back and have him back on the Gangplank? That was a big pick for them in their last series. We saw that amazing chain link barrel, barrel play mm -hmm. in a turret dive. Does mean they're going to be on the defensive in the top side. So, scaling is what King Zone are opting into, not let their game two draft where they were the super friends trying to take over the game pre 20 minutes. It's going to be interesting to see all the bands that we have come out here. You mentioned the Callista, uh, not really a big one for the Rock Tigers, or maybe it shouldn't be anymore after they haven't had much luck. But uh, 
Only the bottom lane has not been picked by either team, so lots of targeted bans there. And what you expect for Kingzone is to ban one of Zaya or Caitlyn and then take the other one. Seems to be the most likely scenario with their second man, Ezreal, the pocket pick. So we might be going into once again exciting territory where the word jinx can be said with hmm. optimism. And then, of course, depression shortly yeah. afterwards when she's not drafted. You never want to jinx it by saying jinx before she gets picked. I see what you did there. But uh, you already did it. We did it a lot of times, so we'll not be seeing her tonight. And uh, Braum going to be targeted down here. Uh, key so far, one in five on the Braum, but definitely one of the big power picks. High tier supports left on the Rift. See where the Thresh goes. Both supports here. Known Thresh players. Key wanting to play make with family around and Zaya will be banned. So suddenly Caitlyn Tristana seem like the go to AD carries unless we're getting frisky, as I had mentioned. Could take support here, but usually you take AD carry and then counter pick support when you're on red side. They're actually gonna go for the support and now I start to wonder. I think they're actually setting up for a Cogmore potentially here as the final pick. They will go into the Tom Kench. They need a winning lane and while BDD Zazir is gonna have some time trying to keep up with the rise because it's BDD. Maybe you can get some semblance of lane control. They won't have it in top side, so don't want to be too liberal with what you give up on the bottom side. Full bot lane needs to be locked in for Rocks Tigers, and maybe they'll just take away the Cogmore. Yeah, certainly offers Rocks uh, a bunch of scaling themselves. We'll see what they'll use to protect this Cogmore. King Zone maybe one step ahead of it, expecting this and taking the Tom Kench away would definitely be one of the best ways to protect. And you can see here Rocks Tigers versus KT Rolster, where uh, they actually did 2-0 KT. Song you dead, definitely had a lot of fun on the Kog'Maw. So this is going to be a self counter pick here. If they do go for the Thresh, it's for team comp and for playmaking. You would need to gank this lane to make it work because Tom Kent's one of the cleanest answers to the Thresh, but they go for it anyway. So a lane counter pick. They might just end up getting stuffed by a very powerful 2v2, though. Kong'Maw was being set up by Kingzone. You can definitely pivot to the Caitlyn and have a winning lane to get them going. But you can see Bray in the timer run out. We'll see if they actually commit to the Caitlyn. Oh, the change oh. up. I was going to say, we've been seeing some more Ash and Prey, of course. You say Prey, you say Ash in the same sentence. So they're going to bring it out again. This guy is the most legendary Ash player in the history of League of Legends. His Ash arrow accuracy has been seen both on the domestic side and on the world scene as well. Super hyped to see Prey jump back on the Ash. I'm sure he was watching Deft, shaking his head and saying, <laughs> I could do it better. No doubt, uh, we are going to get to see Prey playing Ash once again. A huge treat tonight. Everything else very standard, you know. The, the even the Thresh Kogma that you don't see too often, at least more standard than the Ash. So, should be some fun here to start off with game number one, allowing Prey to play something different. Caitlyn was decided to be too boring. They wanted to yeah. mix it up. It gives them more range to engage as well, which they were lacking. It was only the Skarner for engage and. The best thing about Ash is you just ult Thresh and try to kill him in one rotation rather than trying to mess around with the Kog'Maw. So Engage coming through from the Ash. The backline threat on the side of Rock's Tigers is actually mostly around the use of the Realm Warp rather than any normal picks like a Jarvan to get backline access. Maybe a flanking Gnar, but unlikely. Still a very strong front line for Sung Yoon to pop off on. And like you mentioned, we showed the KT match where he was able to do so. Now that required a mid-game donation. So we'll see if yeah. King Zone and I donate, donate over some power, but a power draft on the top side, especially the 8.1 special into King Zone. Happy to counter pick in top side. They take the Azir when the rise is open. And honestly, the only truly winning lane is the Ash in the bot side. So we'll see what Peanut can get done on the Skarner. Yeah, an interesting pick for him. He's not necessarily going to be in the face of someone here, but more so looking to gang some lanes, hit six fast. Either way, guys, we're going to see it all happen live right now. Let's jump into game number one. Back on the rift here, Sunday to Tuesday, always just a, a one day gap. It's nice to be back. And just enough hours to make you miss Korean League of Legends, Valdez. Yes. So, nowhere I'd rather be 
We're still on patch 8.4, guys. I imagine 8.5 will be hitting the LCS regions this week, but it's going to be next Tuesday, I would imagine, for us. Watching here as Rox Tigers grouping very early, trying to contest the Spire. Yeah, nice little chunk of gold. Of course, might hurt Skarner a little bit in terms of timing if he wants to get over towards that Rift Scuttler. Whoa. Whoa, calm down. That's, uh, okay. Prey's really happy he got back on the Ash tonight. That was almost Lissandra tier yeah. of laughing and shrieking. Prey's second most played of all time is the Ash. 70 games, 52 and 18, almost a 75% career win rate. Was hurt from spring season last year, where he was playing when Longju were not one of our top teams, and they lost quite a lot of games there as their only primary engage on the team. Prey is so often the initiator with his accuracy on the Ash, so a real treat to see it come back for the first time in 2018. Yeah, certainly. Uh, I remember that spring, they definitely were not having a fun time. I forget who it was in the mid lane, I think it was Crash. Fly. Fly? Okay. Fly, currently of FlyQuest. Crash was their jungler. Ah, right, okay. Recently, At least I remember the name, that's, that's one thing. You got the right team, so yeah. that was the important thing there. <laughs> we're seeing Peanut. Going for some creative pathing here. Yeah, he full cleared the blue side. Now he's going directly to the Rift Scuttler here. Speaking of which, we got an early devour in the bottom lane. That's going to be first blood. Two minutes, 28 seconds into the game. This is not supposed to happen, but somehow King Zone make it happen time and time again. Trying to turn on to Khan on the top side, though. He's just going to flash here as someone. He's looking oh. to uh, burn his own flash. He's like, well, that's not fair if only one of us burn our flash. Khan actually moved up, which meant that he was under turret. And if he took another auto and Q, he probably would have died to a second turret shot. So he had to get out. Peanut looking to see if he's going to be greedy when it comes to getting onto the Gromp. If he uses the Q over, he will die. He's being very respectful here, is Songwon. Ooh, yeah, and he's not even going, he's going all for the, the way Gromp. to his walls. If you're going to go for a camp, that's the one you want to go for. Very nicely done by Songwon. Their heads up stuff, given where Peanut was last seen on the map. Mm -hmm. And Prey and Gorilla getting 2v2 kill. I mentioned that Ash and Tom Kent should have a happy time against Cogmore. Wasn't expecting them to pick a 2v2 kill up at level two, so that's a laning mistake yeah. by Sung Yoon and Ki. We've seen this a couple of times recently. That was their most reliable thing before, is ships passing the night. Yeah. They're gonna see each other here, getting the nice read on Sungwon. Ki still sitting here at level two. I don't know if we're gonna get a replay of what happened in the bottom lane, but certainly if you're getting hit three times by Tom Kent, you're not having a fun time. Speaking of which, level two support fights in the river already, and uh, Devour could come in here. He doesn't have his flash. Oh, he oh. misses the lick and will not get the stun. Look so. for the prediction, ended up looking silly, but cool to see someone around the pressure Rise has in the early laning phase do a bit of battle warding. The face of the true battle ward himself, the man the term was invented to encompass, which is Peanut. They know that the blue hasn't been taken Ooh. after the early contest. So much slow, careful jungling from both of these uh, players. You can see they're reading very heavily into where their opponents are, and Peanut is going to see this leash, so he should know now that uh, someone is in here. Doesn't have a trinket ward to actually get vision of it. Has to face check. Oh, you see, this is a rise in here in the flash. Or rather, the smite is going to come in from someone. But here's BDD trying to help him out. But it's three on one now as Peanut goes down. Not able to get the kill. And the slow coming in on a BDD. The double flash. And they're going to get a second kill onto King Zone. Seems like they were just too greedy trying to fight for the red buff. Unnecessary from Peanut and B. Just give up a red buff. It's not important. You're all about experience towards level six. The second kill also unnecessary. Whoever made the call to show the bravado and actually go in 2v3, they knew Khan's flash was down, and he's on Gangplank. Of course yeah. he's getting pushed in. There was no chance that Gangplank was going to rotate. They didn't have a ward to check it. Peanut checks with his face, has so many chances to disengage, and doesn't take any of them. Yeah, I think the audio on the... Skarner E can let you know when it hits a second person. So maybe he's like, yeah, I got him. Maybe I can come in here, stun, and steal away the red. But as you're saying, it's definitely very risky to go in for something like that, especially when you got mid being pushed in by the Rise, top being pushed in by the Gnar. Your problem with that is that there wasn't incomplete information there for Kingzone. Usually the team that's being invaded on has to wonder. They knew exactly what was happening. 
Okay, they're gonna go really heavy on the gorilla, but look at this, he's turning it around, the Devourer coming in, but the Great Hell is not enough, and he will survive for now. Cannon Barrage will make it, and even trade, but now someone is gonna be, Zangin rather, is gonna be flashed upon. Lava now TPing in, trying to get onto Peanut here, that Realm War, but someone goes down, a double kill to Peanut, and finally that last auto will go over. So much action so far, Prey, he's looking for more with the Flash W, and he is gonna get the kill. Prey has so many kill involvements, already. Madness on the bot side. Conway just die solo at the top. Looks like maybe Papa never gets a chance to talk in this cast as Khan trying to run away, but no flash. And one more will do it. And a solo kill on the top lane. We have 10 kills in six minutes in Korea of all places. We're going full solo queue on this one. Some questionable stuff by King Zone around their own red, but they trade up heavily in the bot side. Level four is being surprised by a cannon barrage already being available. BDD, the only person who wasn't able to respond, does pick up some CS from all of it, but because of his early death, wasn't able to get a stinger, doesn't really have lane control and against Arise in any single way. Somehow, support Ash is ready to go, one, zero, and four, <laughs> and already has Berserker Greaves, and Unreal. you'll notice he is not taking a page from Death's playbook. He was the first Ash to go always into Essence Reaver, and always focus on an Essence Reaver build, so what we're gonna see here is the extended play. It was initiated by Rox, but King Zone get the call that Cannon Barrage is up, and that Skarner is coming, so stand and deliver. Gorilla knew he would die, but they were going to get two onto the bot side. And this goes forever and ever because we're in the deathmatch mode. Two weeks before the end of the season, Macro need not apply. How about kills? One after another, Lava. He does TP down into the bottom side. Eventually does get punished. It's a positive trade for the side of King Zone. But then you have Khan up here. Meanwhile, some trouble. We got some action actually in the picture and picture, but Song Yoon, he's burning. Will he go down? Nope. It looks like no. The health pot is going to help him. Okay. He gives him just enough to disengage and allow us to show our replay. Thank you, League of Legends gods, for giving us a moment to actually show a piece of action. Song Yoon's sticking around anyway, but just wants to pick up some lifesteal, which honestly he doesn't have. Just trying to pick up gold, I guess. Doesn't have Doran's Blade, so. Not gonna find any life steal. Ordering on there. Watching the top side, as this is where Song Wan was much happier earlier in the game. Around the gangplank, who's been struggling a little bit. Ocean Drake turned on to Prey yeah. has most of the kill involvement, so they return to this objective. Trying to find somewhere. Let's split the map. I think that's what King Zone should be doing. Split the map. Khan is still in a bit of a rough spot. Top side is not a happy place for the side of King Zone Dragon X. It's a really quick response here from King Zone as Khan. He was getting frisky though, and now he's gonna be stunned up and the Sejuani ultimate coming in. That's just, again, too greedy, trying to get some of those Krugs, that extra gold. And I don't know, it just looks like overconfidence at this point. It's definitely greed. He had his ult up in about 10 seconds at the start of the play, and then greedy trying to contest Krugs for some reason. Gonna fully disengage, ult to the minion wave, instead decides to walk up and die. So this really doesn't read the situation very smartly and is Gangplank is certainly very different to his other champions. They're lane focused. And when Khan is away from lane focus, by the end of the game, we see the big barrel links. We see the great plays. But when it comes to losing the minimum, it kind of feels counterintuitive to ask Khan to do that because getting the maximum, that's what he's all about. I mean, he has vision of both of the players here. And he, he moves in to just parley a Krug and try to steal it away. It's, it's not what you want at this point. You're trying to scale up. Look at the... It's top lane right now. It's 83 to 53. Three kills also on Linderong, who is having the game of his life against Khan. On the Nar as well. Nar is so big for him. Four and one this season. It's been banned against Rox Tigers very frequently. So King Zone continuing to play as they did against BBQ. Very unsociable, let's say. No laning phases. We're fighting at all moments in the game. Trying to increase the pace of the game. And this is the Art House team that decided to have a 39 minute first blood against Jin Aaron. To me, I feel like King Zone are good enough to set the pace of games. But right now, the pace is getting away from top lane, especially, and making them make some pretty silly mistakes in the early game. Yeah. So, I mentioned that King Zone can have anyone carry on any given day. And it looks like maybe this time it's going to be BDD's turn as he's going to be scaling up, has the most creep farm in the game so far at 106. That's also mentioned that Khan has gone very disrespectful 
in his rune choice as well. He did not go for bone plating second win. He's on sorcery, so he doesn't have any defense whatsoever. He will die on sight. This is going to be noted by the enemy team. They would have, of course, said, all right, where's the bone plating? Where's the defensive? It is so standard to go klepto into resolve secondary to get that extra tankiness for laning phase. Khan trying to outplay and so far only outplaying himself. That he is, and uh, he's sitting here, he's behind in a lane that he's supposed to be behind in, but a couple of mistakes of his own makes it that much harder. Still going directly into Trinity Force. Rocks having control of the map at this point in time. Even though they're down on gold, they're gonna be able to pick up that Rift Herald and move towards the top lane. Most of the power is around King Zone's bot lane. It's not kills, but kill involvements. And a CS lead coming through for the Ash. So for now, Rocks push up. They play around where they're strong. Kings don't need to understand. Ooh. They should play where they're strong as well. The race is close, but it is won by the Rocks Tigers. This organizational rivalry is heating up. 11 minutes in, it's still not clear when we're still at ki uh, kill a minute pace, which is, again, insanity for the LCK, but insanity of yeah. their own making for King Zone. And Rocks Tigers always with the interesting rotations. Uh, loving to use that unsealed spell book on the AD carry in the past and try to rotate up towards the top side and get some advantages through that. But uh, they give up the bottom turret and they go towards mid to hold it up against BDD as there are three members rotating up into the top side to get that first blood turret. So eventually they just throw lava down into the bottom side. And this is going to be their new setup. It's this lane set up to allow the Cogmore back into the game because he hasn't been able to 2v2 lane with any priority after all the earlier hijinks. There is the record I'm talking about. This is LCK numbers only. He's played it at Worlds and in other venues, but still 59 games of Ash in Korea, then plenty of Worlds and international tournaments. Backs away. Again, legend. This guy is the best Ash player to ever play mm -hmm. League of Legends at the competitive level. So very excited for that Ash arrow accuracy, or if he's rusty, because it has been a long time. Death last week was the first Ash we'd had in Korea all year, so. Praise decided to jump on and show him who's boss. And the Essence Reaver build is back. Essence Reaver, Hurricane, Infinity Edge was the old special coming through from Prey. Yeah, we haven't had an Ash Arrow just yet. Still waiting on the first one. He's sitting at level eight so far. And because of the wonky lane setup we've had so far, we haven't had the, the 2v2 butt heads just yet. But this might be our first time as they make their way up towards the top side to join Sangyun and Ki does mean that Ash and Tom Kench have to give away priority because top lane is where Rocks have set up their vision, where they've been strong. So they're giving up minion waves to coordinate with their side lanes. Not usually something Kingzone has had to do. They've had breakneck pace. They're on a 10 game winning streak, not matches, games, but still 10 in a row for the side of Kingzone. Ever since they dropped game one against Afrika, what feels like ages ago. We're back in here, BDD farmed, but not fed. And bot lane, plenty of kill involvement. Just, there's the first arrow. There it is, right on top of that Sensuani. But look at how tanky he is. Finally, the Devourer comes in to try to save BDD. But the hook gets Gorilla. That might be two kills going to the side of Rocks Tigers. Someone Pretty gets as well. There, make it three. Just eating up here is Rocks Tigers having as much of a... Uh, <laughs> Food as they possibly can up against King Zone. A couple of mistakes once again. Now we got the Rift Herald going down the mid lane. They're fighting where they're weak. They're still fighting around the top side. Azir may be free farmed, but he's not in position to do damage because he's DPSed out as it starts and Gangplank not involved in the fight. King Zone Dragon X, too overconfident, too pushing. When they have scaling everywhere other than the Ash, and Ash at one item is not super powerful either. So they get punished as they should be. And Rocks Tigers, we wondered when their first win would come on patch 8.4. Increasingly, it could be game one of this series. Well, you talk about how much action there is and how it's non-standard, but it's King Zone making the action themselves and not going their way. They see Sungwon here and Prey of course. calls it. They go for him, but... Uh... Where's Sungyun and Ki is a question that BDD decided not to ask. And so he basically dies at the start. Nice little prediction on the ultimate, the living artillery to get him. So there was no way to be disengaged. Then Gorilla's exposed and Prey doesn't have a front line to fight around. Dies as well. Definitely over eager where they are not strong. But this is something we've said three or four times. I feel like I'm on repeat, live or replay. Feels like a replay when it comes to the decision making from King Zone. 
and they need to just once again take a chill bill, relax. They have the gangplank for late game. The Azir is at one item. But if they continue to fight when the enemy team is strongest, which is definitely a farmed Gnar and one item, Rage Blade already complete on the Kog'Maw, they'll continue to find losses in the 5v5. Yeah, you take a couple of fights like that, and all of a sudden you're looking at double QSS as well. You mentioned the one item, but now the bottom lane is never going to be caught by the Skarner, by the Ash. How do you engage onto them now? You need to have a really fantastic engage when you're now behind in the game. And I guess it falls onto BDD. He is the reason, one of the reasons they went for the Ash is they needed secondary engage, Skarner and Ash. Now going to have to be using both of their ultimates to get someone, as QSS not going to be able to get both those abilities. But they do control the map. Durox Tigers, the gold lead, misleading because it's Gangplank. But regardless, starting to push the turrets, trying to push the pace. Mid-game is where they are strongest, and Kingzone take it over just after 30 minutes. Three items onto the Gangplank. But if Kingzone keep opting into fights and giving over kills, the mid-game to late-game may never come. Khan in trouble again, is going to be stunned up, and we got a big rotation. Eats the oranges, but now he doesn't have a chance. The flash comes in, they finally do get that, and they're going to pick up another turret in the bot lane with this rotation. And he actually read that situation very well. Once he was caught, he held on to his orange and his flash till the minion wave was crashing. That's what they needed, otherwise Thresh would have answered him. Peanut trying to go kind in kind with a gank top side, but he's going to be spotted out by a ward put down by Lava. King's Zone looking to their, their second turret of the game and start to answer, but there will be three turrets down for Rox Tigers inevitably with Nara taking this one down. So 17 minutes, great pace to have three outer turrets down for the side of Rox Tigers. Surprising damage coming out of these two, mostly from BDD. So they get that trade, not half bad for King Zone. As I feel like after that last fight, that's when you, as a team collectively, you say, okay, guys, we're playing a little bit too fast. Let's slow it down. And so far, they've been good about it. You know, Khan doesn't get caught. Good decision up in the top side. And let's see how well King Zone can play from behind. We don't get to see it too often, Papa. And remember, this team is not locked into first place. And in other leagues, the value of first place is not inflated like it is in Korea. Regular season first place is by far the most desirable thing to have in Korea because we have a gauntlet system. You automatically are top two. You don't get better seeding. You don't skip one match. You skip four matches and go straight to the grand final. So they need two match wins this week to guarantee it. Two match wins overall would probably do it. Three would guarantee it. But they want to get it done this week with two matches. They don't want to be losing a game one to Rocks. Yeah. I mentioned it in the beginning of the broadcast, but Rocks Tigers have been the the dark horse team of this entire split you know you, you know all the other big names ksv former samsung and skt and of course the three on top always very solid but the rocks tigers coming in and impressing from time to time and we don't have a bipartisan crowd we never do because sk telecom are by far the most popular team rocks doing well bodes very poorly for skt who already are rank outsiders they're looking to rocks the team to leapfrog rocks tigers beat king zone Chances for SKT get more remote. So that's something to remember. If you're an SKT fan, because of the last two weeks of play, there's always playoff implications one way or the other. So for you SKT fans out there, you're looking for a King Zone comeback. Yeah. It's scary too, because definitely one of the more inconsistent teams is Rox, but I feel like they play very emotionally. If they get ahead and they're feeling good, if they're feeling it on the day, they can take it anyone. They've already defeated KT 2-0 and KSV 2-1. So those are a couple of big teams that the Rox Tigers have history against and they've destroyed. So going up against King Zone, we'll see if they can do it here. But remember, we spent about two minutes going for a bit of place setting. Where are we at? Where's the season at? That's two minutes of not action on the screen, which means two minutes of scaling for King Zone. They're still not in any real gold trough because Gangplank is doing his Gangplank thing. So the game is slowed down. This pace does suit King Zone if they can continue to be in a similar scenario to sort of the Gathering Storm proc, which now basically stand out on every AD carry. If you guys are wondering, we almost never see non Gathering Storm on AD carry. But the scaling is starting to happen, and Rocks want to increase the pace for a fight about around the red buff. They certainly have the ability to engage if they want to. And someone's going to miss here. And he gets extremely low pulled in by the Skarner. And Peanut will survive at the end of it. So 
The jungler from Rocks giving one away. A straight victory as well because Gangplank could cancel his teleport. As long as he doesn't die in the 1v1. Khan is able to farm as well, so that means gold in the side lane. Well, ke teleports are cancelled. Khan able to match Linderong. This time, they did not have access to the backline, so Ash and Azir could play front to back, meaning they could just fight and damage the Sejuani rather than trying to make any creative plays. That suits King Zone's draft, and that is what Rock's Tigers cannot have happen fight after fight. Yeah, certainly, you can never call it until it's over. And uh, speaking of which, it looks like King Zone wants to take control of this streak. And it looks like Rock's Tigers are going to commit to a fight here as the TP comes in from Lava. The hook just barely misses Khan. Could have gotten away from that one, but Rocks, they will expend their TP to make sure they get this mountain drain. But the TP is enough to overlook something like the jungler not being grouped and force King Zone away. So the fact that Sejuani was coming from base ended up being irrelevant. Does mean the top lane is a safe place to farm again. Does mean they continue to let the pace of the game drag, but never ideal to give up a mountain drake when Kogma does shred Baron so quickly. Yeah, and it's Kogma rise too, so. You're gonna have a couple of cannons just firing away at that Baron if they ever get a chance. We'll see what Prey looks like firing away in the late game, because you will note that he has gone for the trademark Prey build of Essence Reaver Hurricane into usually either Infinity Edge or delaying the Infinity Edge to fourth item and going armor penetration. And the reason why I point this out is that when Deft played the Ash, he went for more the Bang School of Thought, which was Infinity Edge early and not going for the Essence Reaver at all. One of the reasons the Prey has always prized the Essence Reaver is the utility aspect. Your ult is on a much shorter cooldown. You stay high mana. The final fight against KSV in game two that KT lost to KSV, Prey was out of, sorry, uh, Deft was out of mana and wasn't able to do damage over the wall. That doesn't happen when you go the Essence Reaver build. So evaluating Ash in the late game, to me, the extra utility and reliability of the Essence Reaver makes me a big fan. Yeah, there's a reason it's been standard for quite a long time. Deft not reading the Ash playbook, perhaps. So still sitting here for a long time. I mean, you have the items coming through now for King Zone, even the Knight's Bow on the side of Tom Kench will definitely help out uh, either Prey or BDD as they get into these later game fights. Very early Morellonomicon does come out from BDD. Mm -hmm. Looking for the healing reduction relevant against the Rise and of course the Cogmore. Warmog's also being cut down. Mentioned a couple times last week, but of course we don't have people tuning in every day. Morella Nomicon now having the ability to have Grievous Wounds on the first attack rather than only below 40% is very relevant in the mid game against something like Warmogs. The fact that it's reliable all throughout a fight. If Azir lives the entire fight hitting five people, they have healing reduction the entire time is a really massive thing. Now the buff got shorter, but if you're consistently autoing, like an Azir is able to do, it's a very relevant pickup, and it's the double magic penetration spike of old with the old Leandries and Sorcerer's Shoes. Here we go. Rocks Tigers start the Baron. Let's see if King Zone can get the check. They do have Prey. There it is. The Hawkshot comes in, and immediately, you're not going to be able to sneak Barons like this as long as your Ash is on top of it. And again, it's Prey. So 30 he knows exactly. 30% CDR and a blue trinket. So yeah, sneaking I mean, Baron against Ash was one of the things that was always the most difficult. I wonder if we'll see more Ash in a meta with less wards because we have the old clairvoyance effect happening yeah. with the E. Oh, okay. Shot. Sungwon again, just throwing a curveball to the side and he engaging by himself. This is not necessarily Watch what they want. On. Here comes Linderon, but he immediately gets knocked up here. And now Sungwon is free the fighting. back. Bray, though, he's going to be knocked down eventually. But BDD in the front trying to get on top of Key. Finally, Khan is going to make his way in here. But look at Sangyun and Lava doing work. Gorilla is going to go down as well. And all of a sudden, Khan a little bit late to the party. That's going to be four members of King Zone down. And it was just a 5v4 where Khan was irrelevant, unable to do anything. Four members alive. Are the barrels even strong enough to chunk anyone? The answer is probably no. And this should be Baron to Rock's Tigers. Yeah, the Rise able to zone him out. Of Effectively, and you can see just how fast it is. If they ever get an opportunity, Rocks are going to take it. And I can't wait to see that replay. That was a crazy fight. It looked good. Peanut grabbed Linderong right before he could do anything, but it just did not matter. And it started with a Songwon missed ult for the second time, and you think, okay, maybe this is the time for King Zone. 
Prey is caught in the middle of it all, but the difference in the play is that Gangplank does not teleport. He walks over. He gets oh. chunked out, doesn't die. It's a big ultimate by Linderong. Well positioned not to get stunned, but into the fight. And while it's a perfect fight, largely by King Zone, they're unable to actually fight 5v5. So everyone ends up exposing the Realm Warp in combat. Was really cool as well. So if it ended up being a true 5v5, they seem to have the right idea to win a fight, but they didn't have the cavalry there to actually make the push work. He actually opened up so much space for Song Yoon to move forward. It looked like Prey was free hitting, but Song Yoon was as well. And he had the presence of mind in the fight to not just hit the front line, he went directly to Prey. And with that extra range that he's got on the cockball, he just three shot Prey. And Ash, we know he's definitely not very tanky. And Song Yoon certainly doing his job to help win that fight. And uh, it was cool to see also the Realm Warp immediately after getting the kill to make sure they got Peanut as well. Yeah, the front line evaporated and the Gangplank wasn't there. So there was less accountability for the Cogmaw than there was for the Ash. So Sin Prey's Ash outplays, not usually in an undermanned situation. So I agree. Song Yoon read it really well. King Zone set themselves up to fail because Khan couldn't find a teleport. And now the Baron buff could mean the base being broken pre-30 minutes. And that's when we said Rox Tigers was still at their big position of strength. Yeah. King Zone, at least they do have a surprising amount of wave clear with the barrels and the ash to help out with the volleys. But this is just an eventuality that this turret will go down. And speaking of which, Lava, he's all alone. So looks like they want to get at least one member. Four for one in the trade for the turret, but at least they chop away at Rox's lead. They also get someone who wants to be in a side lane. So they do actually make their side lanes in a little bit better order there, even if the trade on the face of it's not fantastic. A kill for a turret. The turret would have gone down, and they get mid lane turret as well. So they're going to salvage something and also largely cancel out the rest of the Baron buff. You'd say the Baron buff defense by King Zone was pretty on point. They might even steal a Cloud Drake on the back end of it as all. Well. There will be a fifth Drake spawn as we're only 27 minutes into the game. Yeah. Doesn't feel like 27 minutes no. as we've had 21 kills so far. But that's just the state of the game. The early and mid game was very crazy. Let's take a look at how this happened. I mean, it looks deceptively safe right now, but then there's Abyssal Voyage. Lava wants to go in. Hash arrow misses, <laughs> uncharacteristic, but the Emperor's Divide enough to interrupt it. Lava goes down, just wasn't respecting the fact there could be an all in there. Again, doesn't mean the world, but it is a bit of relief for the side of King Zone when it comes to Baron Buff power plays. Trying to use the last 30 seconds of the Baron buff, but look at that, Song Yoon, he might be dove upon here as all the ultimates coming in, and they get him in the back line. Now they're on the chase, the TP gonna be canceled. Linderong might have his GA popped. Doesn't really look like it though, as he's trying to get away the Meganar, but the Skarner looks like he may just be a little bit too fast. Gonna be able to pop Peanut away and jump the wall, so he does survive, but... Fantastic use of all their abilities to get into that back line. And the end of the Baron buff baits another kill over to the side of King Zone as Sung Yoon's flash was still on cooldown. The big problem through all of this was that the banner of command wasn't ready to go. So there was no ban and the base isn't broken. King Zone stay so comically close in gold, only a thousand gold plus behind. As we see the replay, we already saw what happens when King Zone were outnumbered. This time, the barrels were on point. Those barrels that were uh, tickling 10 minutes ago are starting to be ready to go. Rise cancels teleport, understands there's no way to salvage this. But crucially, Rox doesn't give up a second kill, so it's only a slight lead to King Zone. It's pretty incredible how they find the ability to get in there. Perhaps Song Yin was just a little bit too far forward because one poke from the Azir and one barrel from the GP was all they needed to be able to have the confidence to go in on that play. Really interesting build from Song Yin. First time I've seen this in pro play. Starts off with the Rage Blade, the Hurricane, sure. If you have the strong front line, Hurricane can be the way to go. Third item, Rapid Fire Cannon on a champion that doesn't go Infinity Edge traditionally. Could go fourth item, Infinity Edge, still something possible. But the Rage Blade suggests an on-hit build. Not a Blade of the Ruin King, so no lifesteal in this build outside of the fleet footwork coming through from Song Yoon. It's very interesting sort of build where if he's chunked out by some barrels or even the Gangplank ulti, getting back to full health and topped up is basically impossible oh. as someone wants to face check. They're gonna face check and look at Lava going low, but Peanut gonna be forced 
to be devoured as Rocks Tigers do in fact get away. The GP gonna be canceled here by Linderoff. They stacked CC a little bit too much to King Zones, didn't get the full duration, unable to pick up the kill. That was definitely a jump scare for Song Wan, who really wanted the ward, but uh, kind of understood there was a chance he was going to be outnumbered. Yeah. Outnumbered comically, but not going down is the Sejuani, who delayed her build. Warmox was ready to go, but went for the Banner of Command. Second Baron going to be heavily contested by the side of King Zone, is working on the Mortal Reminder after the Infinity Edge. Honestly, it feels like Prey might have even pack even more of a punch than Song Yoon, unless the front line goes AFK, which is possible. We've seen it happen mm -hmm. already. The front line is more robust for Rox, and they're putting faith in Song Yoon's positioning with Flash Up, but with no lifesteal, even the Gangplank Ultimate can basically chunk the Kogmo down to 50% health, and then from there, anything can happen. Certainly a very entertaining game we've had so far. King Zone gonna come in here and get some vision down overall. Uh, you mentioned Sung Wan being the one to uh, face check the brushes. He is the most tanky, especially finishing off that Warmox, but he is also the one that has no QSS. So if he's alone in the jungle or if they find an ability to get on top of that Sejuani, even Sung Wan has got to be careful. Meanwhile, Peanut is another one of these Skarners who can't find tankiness on a budget. Certainly doesn't go threat. Trinity Force Skarner hasn't been a thing for a couple of years. He's basically an ultimate and then slowly dies. That's not really anything else going to happen. Good news with Peanut in a fight. So I think Song Wan definitely has the advantage in most skirmishes and in face checks as well. With the amount of tankiness he has going, Locket was picked up by Key. So they've got some great team fight options. It was much earlier into the Knight's Vow from Gorilla. Again, the AD carries largely are going to be the difference in this fight. Although Azir does a pretty great impression of an AD carry with consistent damage. Oh, yeah. The Realm Warp in the previous fight they won was massive as well. So those are the big cooldowns and champions you want to keep your eyes peeled upon. So it feels like they would decide the next fight. And honestly, with where the game timer is at, probably the game. Well, Peanut uh, in a little bit of trouble here. They're going to try to engage on a key, but mostly just disengage as they were scared about Peanut. Gorilla here in the front is going to be forced to blow his cleanse. On a knife's edge is this game. Anyone gets caught, and that might be it. And speaking of which, Sungwon takes a healthy chunk of damage in the front line. And here's Peanut looking for it. As I mentioned before, still no QSS on Sungwon. So what happened there was that Prey altered key, hoping to get the QSS, didn't get it. And then Peanut couldn't re-engage with the ult onto Thresh because QSS was still available. They really wanted to get one of the QSSs down to allow Peanut to have a role, but because they didn't, Peanut is still gonna be frustrated. The tension is still there on how to make Skarner actually get a play work in the next fight. Quadra QSS now mm -hmm. onto Rox. I think that's too many, honestly. It gives up their gold lead going for four, but basically they're saying Sejuani is gonna face check, and Nar really wants to guarantee his positioning when it comes to a big Nar ultimate. That's a lot of gold spent on QSS, and Prey wants to be the one to actually blow one of them with the Ash Arrow. Well, King Zone looking like they're large and in charge right now as they're thinking they about do a getting lot of on top of here. That's Prey. actually a fake. It's a fake, yeah, look at that. Unbelievable, bringing out all the new meta strats. They're daring him to it TP right now. It gets a teleport, right and the teleport's canceled. That was from the Rise. That was really innovative by Prey. Didn't leash the Baron, but looked like they were going for it. Still, King Zone can't find anything out of it other than Ryze's teleport. But this does mean that the side lane pushing into the inhibitor will be relatively safe after Ryze did use TP. But again, King Zone after their shenanigans are going to give up control of that Baron pit. Rocks coming in. They actually don't get too many wards around the area. Just looking for another pick. Maybe it's going to be Gorilla. There is that Sejuani ultimate used into the hook. They try to get all that CC down, but it's not enough to kill him. Oh, just barely. It looks like he picks up the kill after that last Kog'Maw ultimate. So they finally pick off a member. Getting Night Tick and the Living Artillery kills Gorilla. Gorilla still has 35 seconds on the respawn. The damage dealers are high health, so this Baron is far from free. Sungwon with his Warmogs, he's going to be in the front tanking this one up and look at how fast it goes down with the mountain and here we engage. go, they're going to engage on Tapina, this isn't enough, but look at Prey and BDD in the background doing all that damage, Prey. he's going in, and the huge ultimate from the side of BDD, they clean up 4v5 and King Zone 
with one fell swoop, get themselves back in the game. Damage dealers are well and truly online. Prey may have died, but he did huge damage, <laughs> and Nazir smiles, BDD smiles, knowing that he was left unaccounted for in that fight. Khan and BDD, the super best friend solo laners for King Zone, will take down the inner turret, looking at respawn timers. Still a lot of time, but I think they might want to turn onto Baron and two mana as Gorilla respawns. So we're watching the replay. Remember that all the damage is alive. All the CC is used onto Peanut, and then Prey free hits at the start. BDD waits for his time and gets the scoop of a life. That's a scoop of the most tasty ice cream you could ever want. <laughs> Getting both of those kills, they will get Baron. They're actually gonna wait for Prey. That's greedy, but let's see if they actually do it. They're holding on to it. They're holding on yeah. to get Prey the Baron buff. That is some broad status coming through from the side of King Zone. Five Barons to them, and they're looking to end the game on the next push. Well. Trying to go for that Baron and then engaging all you've got onto the front line of Peanut. Certainly not working out. And now it gives King Zone, you were talking about scaling from the beginning. They're sitting very pretty at this point as the Azir and the Gangplank specifically are beginning to pop off. Even Prey doing a healthy amount of damage before he did go down in the front line. This must be a tilter for Ox. Looks like they're going to end up losing this one. It did end up being an Infinity Edge build from Cogmore. I don't like it because of Gangplank's ult chunking through a Cogmore. If you think back to when it was the previous Cogmore iteration where he had a, a five attack speed cap but basically couldn't stutter step because of how he worked, you just kind of altered the Cogmore with a Rumble or a Gangplank and he basically couldn't do anything because he wasn't being able to move in team fights. This is the sort of situation where he will walk up and do a lot of damage and then sit in a Gangplank ult, maybe flash out of it, and then die to instant damage. A QW coming through will kill him from most of the heroes here, most of the champions on the rift. So there's not a lot going on there unless he is completely safe. And with Flash down, that safety is not there. Well, let's see if they can pull off the miracle now as it feels like uh, the norm has returned to the rift. King zone ahead of the pack. And, and there's the Bannon. The First Bannon of the game. Yeah. Finally does come in. Doesn't have many buddies, though. He's all alone. Gonna be hooked up, poor guy. Never even got to be named. Ash Arrow onto key, but once again isn't able to draw any cooldowns. Gangplank bringing up the minion wave and bot. They're actually looking to collapse onto Khan. Okay, this could be three members. The barrels do the damage. He's trying to chunk him out, but he does go down. And again, it's a trade for one member, and you lose your inhibitor. To see if they can actually engage once again. You could see that key was there. And here Deep comes teleport. the TP trying to come in from behind. If they could force this He's fight, He's got a bar as well. Yeah, but the rise is a little bit too far behind. And so the TP comes in, but Rocks Tigers do not find the way to get that to happen. It's so difficult to play multiple lanes against Baron on this patch. With the general strength of the buff. If you try to pincer one person, you will lose your inhibitor, especially when Azir and Ash could free hit it and BDD gets to back off. It's insanely massive minion wave in the top side to work towards his final item. So we back away, we judge where the game is at, we remember the expectations set, how strong Rox Tigers were pre-30 minutes and how Kingzone would eventually outscale them. We've reached that territory and it's still not impossible for Rox Tigers to reach a fight. This is actually a four item Cogmore where he's still getting stronger because he went Infinity Edge rather than the on-hit build with Sand and Blade of the Ruin King. So some of those calculations have to be adjusted. Cogmore free hits, anything is possible, but the reliability of Prey free hitting is higher. Therefore, you worry for the side of rocks. Someone here, the Ash Arrow is going to go wide as even Predator used up, but in the end, they cannot find the engage. Cool. There's crits getting there too. Yep, the wave clear is outstanding at this point from the side of King Zone. They find even a moment in time to try to pick off another turret, but King Zone just laugh in their face when you're looking at uh, Gangplank farmed up, Azir farmed up, even Ash helping out. So here we go. King Zone going to be moving into the top side of the map now. We'll see if uh, the Bandit Minions will help them in the push for this inner turret at least. And Inderong's out of position because he doesn't have teleport and they know there's Banner of Command. So he won't be there for the start. He gets a smite. Some autos coming in. 
Sung Yun has more threat onto the Baton minion. We should mention going for the Infinity oh. Edge build. Here we go. There's that poke. Sung Yun just a couple of auto attacks in the queue from the Azir. And immediately he's pushed down of the lane. Yes, he uses QSS because he was hit by the Ash Arrow as well. So Linderong being out of position loses them an inner turret. Won't lose them an inhibitor. Pings from the side of King Zone onto a massive group minion wave in their bot lane does force them to at least consider pulling away. Definitely not over just yet. Prey cooldown on the Ash Arrow. Comically short, be up in about 15 seconds. <laughs> okay. We're doing a little bit of a gank brush here up in the top side, but Rox not biting the bait just yet, but Lava now slowly moving up. He's out of vision though, funnily enough, just on the edge. He knows the vision he juggling here exactly. super well. He's literally on the edge. And well, he's not gonna bite the bait. Living on the edge against King Zone is usually something that is turned against you, but he lives on the razor's edge and is able to make it happen. Good knowledge there. That's a guy who spent some time playing League of Legends. Oh yeah. Well, it's been paying off so far. He's been part of the reason why Rock Tigers are doing better overall. If you ask why, why is he not walking up there? You consider why would the King Zone recall or go missing is to answer that minion wave. Why is the minion wave still pushing? Mm -hmm. Then you say, okay. A gank brush is actually relatively more likely now than in basically every other scenario because no one showed up bot lane. Well, I mentioned it before, I know QSS, but he gets that Arctic Assault away on the first time. So the arrow is going to be down here for just a moment. Not stolen away, that was claimed by Prey. This game is so tense. QSS is four of which available, one turned into a Makira Scimitar, and there's the lifesteal that Kog'Maw was missing before. So suddenly the Gangplank ult threat is lower. That's an Elder Dragon is going to be burning, and that one is still 45 seconds away from the first spawn. It's a very tense game. We had kill a minute till 11 minutes. We had 11 mm -hmm. kills at 11 minutes. Since then, we've slowed down to 31 kills in 42 minutes. But two big buffs coming. Three stack Elder for the side of rocks, and a 40 plus minute Baron for King Zone. I feel like right now we're in this weird duality that because Baron keeps scaling, I think that actually it's almost always incorrect to get an Eldon. You have, say, four stacks and three Infernals. So right now, we definitely are in a scenario where Baron is by far the superior buff. Second spawn of Elder, then everything goes out the window, but yeah, yeah. that's for now. Well, you can see both teams are setting up for specifically the Elder Drake here, as it does just spawn up. Linderung's teleport still about 15 seconds. King Zone can't really command action because they don't really have anyone to Ash Arrow. So that does mean that Linderon can walk up and they have position on Elder right now. Well, we see the trade here. King Zone walking up. Here we go. Gonna start onto that Elder Drake. And again, they do it incredibly fast. Already down to about half health. Is it gonna come in? The arrow hits Stung Yun in the front again. And it's gonna get low here. Who's gonna get it? Oh! It's gonna go over to PDD. Of all people. Somehow, some way, the smites are too early. No smite even comes out from B Peanut, so they just run away the highway robbery there from the side of BDD. Desperate attempt at a re-engage coming through from Alava, who uses both summoners, because now King Zone can control the Baron Pit with the Elder Drake buff and have the extra damage. So whatever team fight might have worked around the Elder Dragon gets relatively less likely. They're trying to take advantage of the fact that BDD was chunked out. It's a smart move. It gets them some lane control. Mm. This game is still on a knife's edge. Wasn't looking like it early, but King Zone giving you over kills. It's a lot of rocks. Another oh. lease on life. They're going to start the Baron. Here we go again. Huge Baron damage here. Yeah, they saw BDD up in the top side and they thought about it, but at the end of the day, it doesn't work out. Gorilla is actually alone. going in alone. There's the flash trying to get here onto the side, but a leap away from Linderong, who does have his QSS. I believe it was just stunned up. Couldn't tell exactly how much that there was onto Linderong, but it's another cooldown for the Ash potentially to take advantage of. Push through the mid lane. They still have Elder for a minute and a half. Rocks Tigers get one shot at this contest. Otherwise, true damage burn is going to be insane from Hurricane Ash and the Azir as well. They're still camping, though. They desperately want that pick. I think they'll take Linderung even through GA. Someone will always be the guy in the front. They have a nice ability to check brushes with the living artillery with the side of Kog'Maw. Don't see that all the time, but certainly helping out in this game. And so far, just five on five in the mid lane as Sang Yun getting frisky in the front, gets a couple of autos on to Prey, and all of a sudden they feel confident to move forward. Khan going down into the bottom side. 
Always risky. The fight can definitely be over before the teleport channel even comes. He crashes the minion wave now. That's when Rock's Tigers will move up, knowing that Gangplank will take time to get there. There's crazy damage here. How's this going to go? This is the moment. Look at how fast that goes down. They're bringing again. Someone in the front is going to eat that arrow so close with the hook onto Peanut, but it does not come through. Elder still for 20 seconds, and the Baron down oh. to 4,000. It does at least there, and so that's just going to go over to the side of King Zone Rocks. Playing with fire and they get burned as King Zone pick up the buff. But you have to love that this game ends up being a puzzle. If you pause the game at 44 minutes and say, in this scenario, what do you do? I think many people would have three different instructions for how King Zone plays that out. They understand that even if the Baron is started, they can cause them to dealies with AoE damage, ult the choke, and mean that there's no ability to get in there. Baron doesn't release that fast, and they get the Baron. They win the problem-solving party. Maybe we have to start putting these sort of uh, League of Legends problem-solving things into the uh, newspaper to join Sudoku and other things. <laughs> but they found yeah. Lethal in, onto the Baron, at least in that play. Really nicely done by Kingzone. They problem-solved them, and Elder stolen away that one. This time they get a Baron. Can they break the base? They have one inhibitor turret down, but still the problem of the QSSs and their linear initiation comp does reign supreme. That it does, and Rocks Tigers here in the jungle thinking about trying to go for a pick, but they got to get back and defend. The, the wave is pushing, the Bandit Minion is ready. They did ping onto Skarner. They know he's not grouped, but that's not going to mean so much. Arrow comes in, hits Sangin in the back again. There's that damage, forced to blow the QSS once again. Hook not going to hit, and now they're going to get to work here onto this first inhibitor turret. And down should go the inhibitor as well. Trixie the Baron mini, and the Baron is doing its thing in the back line, unable to close on it. And of course, Gorilla now understands that escorting the Baron even more important than escorting the Ash. The back away. They haven't <laughs> taken the mid lane inhibitor yet, yeah. but the damage is rolling up. Notice that Khan has gone full damage build. He now has the Essence Reaver, Infinity Edge, and the Phantom Dancer. One of those crits, basically three quarters Sang Yoon. So it's so difficult for Rox to play this fight. No banner up this time. We'll see if Rox try to make a stand. You'll notice that Linderon up on the top left side. Not near the Narbar, but look at just how much the poke can do. The side of Azir, Ash, and even just the Baron up regular minions. And the engage is going to miss once again. So close to hitting BDD in the front line. The arrow comes through onto Lava, who looks like he's picked up a Banshee Veil. And so the second inhibitor will go down. Khan goes for the disrespectful back. He knows there's no chance of him being taken out, but he wants six items. So his best Teddy impression going for the mortal reminder. You know it's late game when even a gangplank is opting into armor penetration. Back away, we consider it where the game is at, and it is definitely poised on a knife edge. 100% crit Cogmore in the LCK. First Infinity Edge Cogmore build we've seen has certainly hit its stride at 20,000 plus damage earned on the Cogmore. Prey is playing side lanes with this Bannon. Very, very hard to break this last inhibitor. We're waiting for the desperate offense, or the desperate last engage by Rox Tigers. 30 seconds left on the Baron. Well, this time, this outer turret, this inner one here, is going to go down without a fight. They're just going to fight near the inhibitor if they have to. We're not sitting in 8.1 anymore. This is certainly have the big ability to push in. And at least they'll get the first hook into the smite, buying some time, but it feels like just a matter of time for Kingzone to push this one in. Do you remember that that Bannon minion was placed much earlier, so the cooldown will be off in a minion wave? I would argue that the Baron buff will just now expire, so the game is closer than it may appear. 9,000 gold, but we're getting at six items for most carries, so gold starts to become irrelevant. Scaling advantage with Kingzone, but actually forcing something difficult with their comp and the QSSs. They get a Banshee Veil, they poke away the Sejuani passive, but other than that, there's the hook. They got Peanut in the front, but Gorilla is going to be able to get himself out of harm's way and devour him up. And so at least the Cannon Barrage comes in. Perhaps this will be the moment for King Zone to push in. They're trying to tank it up, but this is, has an element of risk. Minion wave a little far away. They want to all in on this minion wave, but Rox Tigers know that. So many things crashing at one time. Another one of these puzzles. How does Rox Tigers stop this going down? The arrow in the front just trying to buy some time. The slow onto Gorilla, King Zone. 
Really have to be careful about this. We're getting late enough in the game. 50 minutes about to ping here. All the Gathering Storm users going to be pretty happy, but it does mean that if anyone on the side of a team goes down, that could lead to a snowball of many members and eventually perhaps the game. So you got to be really careful about diving here. Well, BDD, listen to what you said, ignored it, and has gone Zonius as a <laughs> rejiggered last item to look for an all-in play on the Azir. If someone's going to initiate, it may have to be the Azir, who isn't going to be answered by a QSS. Looking at the information here, reminding you guys that Second Elder spawns in 40 seconds and is basically a game winner. The 100% buffs won't really matter on the ocean and the cloud, but the extra flat and scaling on the true damage is just insane. So the setup there does require Rox Tigers to move forward. Can they find a way for Sang Yun over a wall to press W and kill three people? He is 100% crit Kog'Maw. It can definitely happen. Certainly can. While that Elder is about to spawn here, Prey, he went back, sold his boots, picked up a Trinity Force, because at this point, why not? Khan doing the same, rocking six items and this is going to be the big fight, guys. The inhibitors are down, but Rocks Tigers, as five, are moving in towards the Elder Drake. They want to go for this, or at least deny it for as long as possible. And here we go. Let's take them a while, because Sung Yun is the last person to get there. Gorilla trying to help positioning. Notice that Ash isn't there, and that is information available to Rocks. They stay leashed on this, and Prey is taking a very defensive route to get to his team. Key trying to intercept, or at least get information on Prey. He'll see him in vision now. Okay, it's going to be Lee's. They're moving on to it. It may come down to a smite fight. It is so tense. Kanemura is going to come in. Pino with the hook, but someone in the front. He got it! This time, he finally gets into the huge ultimate from Linderog, but he immediately goes down. Sangyun is getting free hitting in the back, but eventually the Sejuani dies, and so does Linderog. That's going to be two members, even with this Elder Drake. It doesn't look like they can hold. Teleport from Khan trying to bring up a minion wave. Sangyun was alive. But he Sang turns around, and he does a lot of damage. Does it matter, though? He's trying to 1v4. Can he do it is the question. Khan in the front. The, bar the barrel's doing the damage, but Ryze's got damage too. In comes this bannered up regular melee minion. Can they finish this off with this push is the real question. So 40 seconds on Nara and says, Ronnie, surely this is the time. Surely it is. The arrow's going to come in. Lava, but the one hit, the one crit the from the burn side of as well. Here. It's so scary. It's really all up to Sangyun in the front line. But now he doesn't have a front line. Finally, Lava and Key making it back, and they decide that they can't go for it. They're going to take this inhibitor and back off. The game is not done, Papa. They cannot answer the range of the 100% crit. Elder Dragon buffed up. Hurricane. Problem with this, can't do it. Baron is much safer for them. They turn onto the Baron. They cannot close this time. But the Baron damage, there was a Baron. He doesn't get a eulogy. He's just dead. He's done, and here now at 53 minutes, everybody on the rift is nearing six items, or has gotten there yet, maybe just not the supports, and the camera's on Song Yun, and for a good reason. We got a minute left on the Elder Drake, and he's even got red buff. Can he hold this team together is the real question. They need to wait out Elder, because Elder makes him even more comically powerful Elder than a six. I, holy <laughs> crap, that was a 1,842 damage crit. <laughs> what, okay, just calm down, Khan. That was insane. Khan doesn't want to face it that. Oh. Okay, well, there was the Tom Kent's right next to him, so. And he is GP. But either way, anytime you engage, it feels like the game could end on that one engage. And remember this game, these people are getting stronger. You usually say, ah, oh, six items, it's over. Second Elder buff is going to be online again when it respawns. 18 seconds, they have to wait for that one out. Remember that Gathering Storm is on at least the 80 carries, probably more members of both teams. And that has that crazy uh, logarithmic scaling by the time it gets to the higher numbers. You get to comical numbers of AD and AP. So the numbers will continue to get bigger. Yeah, watching here, they really want to go tutorial because they already have two inhibitors down. Okay, finally the hook comes in with the smite. But now that the smite is going to be down for a while, you can see that finally they're beginning to tip away at this final inhibitor turret. And trying to poke all the while, but never keep your eyes off of Song Yun. He's going to be the real key for the side of rocks to be doing that damage. Lava as the key support to help out with that. But with the Baron buff and two minutes left on it, this push can King Zone push it in. The hook is down. 
Minion Wave is crashing in topside. So many things to respect. Oh, finally, he gets one more auto. Not often is 600 range Ash mm -hmm. zoned away from there an auto. She finally gets it. Looks like we're looking at potentially that final one in. He gets the ultimate in the back line for nice slow. Sangyun trying to do the damage to Peanut in the front line, who has been chunked down a little bit. But once again, with the Baron buff, God, this game is so tense. It definitely be decided. Two more kills, and it could go one way or the other. No threat onto Sangyun. Massive beefy tanks in front of him. But they zone with barrel damage. They disengage. They want to take three inhibitors again. And inhibitor respawn coming in just about a minute and a half. Thanks, Spoo TV, for that one. But the mini ways crashing at the same time is actually going to be something that's denied mm -hmm. on the side of King Zone. The base defense is not reaching iPhone game levels of crazy just yet, so game will delay, guys. 60 minutes to dream, even on patch 8.4. Korea started off as, with a fiesta, turning it into a very extended game. And King Zone back away knowing that they still can't close the game yet. Got to hand it to Rox Tigers, even though they had a couple of mistakes in the mid game to give King Zone back the advantage. They're sticking in this one, even down to picking off the second elder, denying that subsequent buff, and then just going 3v5 and keeping themselves alive just for now. Even though they don't have any inhibitors, they still have two Nexus turrets and a dream, Papa. And now we get to the fun case where you get the I'm taking a multiple choice exam and overthinking situation where you have so much gold that you're like, maybe Oblivion, maybe uh, going into Spellbinder on Rise's time now, maybe this is the moment. That's not going to be the moment to end the game, but there's so much gold that selling and rebuying and selling items becomes common, and the right combination is always open to scenarios. Rise with Spellbinder has happened a couple of times in Korea. Mm -hmm. You mentioned waves pushing in at the same time. Now with the Baron buff down, it's going to be a lot harder to do that. And if you have Ryze and Kog'Maw farmed up this much, you just go to the... Okay, I'm going to hold that thought. They're going to engage. They're going to get Prey, but the Devourer comes Lady in. They're on. Oh, Kog trying to get in the back, but the Meganar is a little bit late there. Kondo, he disappears. Sangyun is popping off. They're moving forward, and Brox is trying to take the victory here. The Realm War, they want to get onto the back line, but there it is, trying to fight back, and Lava going to glow too. Sangyun, though, is still alive. Keep your eyes on him. They're trying to get into the back line. Peanut's got to go down. The Devourer is not enough, and he takes out two. Bray still alive somehow. And the game is not over. Linderong had to go back to base to save it. And somehow it's only Bray. Nexus turrets are falling. What is this game? Kingzone kept fighting because of the Winions. There was three inhibitors down at the start of that play. Minion Wave in bot lane pushing in. Kept them accountable. But Peanut and Gorilla knew they were running in to die. There was no threat onto Sangyun at all. We take a deep breath. We enjoy the fact that the last fight that we alluded to 20 minutes ago has never happened because we're still fighting. They get onto Bray, but Gorilla able to get around. You see Linderung's Narbar, and you think this is the moment, but he's altered away. Linderung can't get massive value. Hogmore free hitting takes down Khan, who dies with his flash and teleport because damage calculation against 100% crit Hogmore is going to be off. And this is King Zone realizing we're not going to back away after those two kills. The minions might actually get the job done, and there's no way for Linderung to join. These are the games where men are born, boys turn into men, just three-shotting literally anyone that's in the front line who hasn't built full tank. You see multiple flashes as the auto attack is traveling in the air and they die anyway, happen to lava there right at the end. It's really hard, it happens in a split second, and the decision making in that moment is really gonna determine who wins the game. So, the audience out there wants to know, what does it mean? And one of the things to take away, that you should keep your eyes on, Song Yun's summoners are down, Prey kept Flash through all of that craziness. Could be very relevant if there's a fight, and there will be. The Elder is respawned, we're getting a third Elder Dragon on patch 8.4. <laughs> the Baron, I believe it's the fourth, Insane. might be the fifth, I might be losing my mind right now, will be spawning as well. So there's a lot to keep track of, but Cogmore not having Flash means the right ultimate coming through from even the Gangplank will instantly draw a locket. And from there, if the Cogmore dies or if the Ash dies, the team fight is over. Okay, we are nearing 60 minutes. Once again, the Gathering Storm 
has to be mentioned. 687 AP onto the Azir. We'll wait and see if that number jumps up. Have to imagine the Cogmore has it as well. We may still have the fight before the proc even comes. 20 seconds to that. Here we go, they're gonna start it up, but the barrel in the front line, Key and so Damn. on, already taking some damage. But the Elder's so tanky, they can't rush it down by <laughs> any means. Yeah, they're trying to start it up here. It's gonna continue being leashed. 690 AP, watching the Azir here. Gonna be that proc now. Does he have it? The answer is no. He does not have Gathering Storm. Ooh. Is there on the Ash, like we said. Yeah, probably took Scorch for the lane. Here we go, they're gonna be again bursting it down. Caught from behind, the barrel does not go off. They're gonna pull someone here. Do they have enough damage? He's gonna run away, finally. But here's Linderong trying to get onto Khan now in the top side though, someone gonna They don't low. kill someone. They don't kill someone, and Khan goes down. It's five on four, Rocks Tigers. Will they fight for this? They got a lot of low members, but the Elder Dragon going to leash once again. More cooldowns used by Rocks, but more members of Rocks means that Kings and surely have to back away. You're never 100% sure. Sung Yoon oh, is baby. having a free meal ticket on this uh, Elder as Kings Zone decide they want to take Baron as an answer. Well, let's see if they can do it fast enough. Lava Look knows. At Lava. He's sprinting to the Baron. He's got his Nikes on. Keep in mind, big the, minion waves. The minion waves in top and bottom right now. Another are one in. of those moments, Valdez. What do you do? They look to contest. Five minute elder. It's going to get low. It's going to go over to BDD. Gorilla might just have to give his life for it. Looks like that's going to be the answer. With the Realm Orb, oh! Lava, and Key. A big mistake. Two members go down in the front line. They still have the elder, but look at the minion waves pushing in. They've got Baron too. It's insane stuff for King Zone. Really big mistake from Rock's Tigers. You cannot go in the back line against Azir Ash. Are you kidding me? At 60 minutes, they will lose the inhibitor again. King Zone walk in. We still are not clear if they will win the game, but Khan has teleport in 10 seconds. That's the question. Take a look at that Nexus turret. That's all they've got at this point. That and the Nexus health. Can Rock's Tigers hold this is the big question. I mentioned it before, this damage happens Khan. in a millisecond, so you cannot make any mistakes like the Cider Rocks Tigers did. Remember the Elder buff does buff up this combo oh. even further. Look at that damage on the BDD in the back line. He's incredibly oh. low with Sun Yoon with the barrel and the Caterpillar. He's gonna die. No on oh. auto. He stays alive, but will it matter? They're chipping away at the next and finally Prey wants to do it here. The stun trying to come in, but he gets it. GG is finally King Zone in 62 minutes take the game it turns out there is a way to go to a third elder dragon buff they got all three and lost the game anyway did rocks tigers one mistake will always separate you and the realm warp into the back line was a disaster for the side of the rise and the thresh they go down khan's teleport comes in and they win the game still 60 minutes to dream here in the lck it's not 94 but it felt like 94. we had kill a minute Still 11 minutes in the game, and still we had 49 minutes more of action. King Zone will go back, and their coach will say the early game was the problem. They were unsociable. They made too many mistakes around the mid, early to mid game, which allowed it to go this late. But Rocks Tigers will be devastated. They are still in with that shot to make it to playoffs, and even a game win can matter when game score could be all the difference between fifth and sixth, and playoffs, and watching on as other teams go forward. You can see they're nearly dumbfounded after a game like that. Linderong thinking about what went wrong. A pretty obvious one with the Realm Warp towards the end, but again, you can't expect these guys to be perfect. And Riot, with the fantastic timing, must watch games. You guys just watched one. You were here to witness this game happen. So let's watch what happens here. King Zone do have the damage taken down. Songwon gets in the pit. He was half a second slow to get the smite because Skarner wasn't in range to smite. Ooh. But this is when you get too excited. This is when you go into the back line against Azir Ash with Baron, six items gathering storm. That was the critical mistake. Feels so bad to criticize someone yeah. after 61 minutes of smart play. It's hard. You gotta have the stamina to make the correct decisions even down to the last minute and if that doesn't happen, the game continues, and who knows who would have won. But either way, guys, we have more games on the way after a 10-minute break. Game two coming up.
안녕하세요. LOL 신문집답의 박지선입니다. 이번 신문집답의 주인공은 CS1465개의 기록을 보유한 선수입니다. 바로 진에어의 테디 선수죠. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 그리고 테디 선수를 잘 감시할 오늘 제이스는 바로 엄티 선수입니다. 테디 형한테 몰라 한도 많았고 괴롭힘도 많이 받았는데 오늘이 풀날인 것 같네요. 내가 제이스 하고 싶어. 늦었어. Let's get started. First, can you introduce yourself and your team? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's your name? I am Teddy. And you are? Team? Ah. I am Shineo AD Teddy. Okay. Where do you want to travel with the junior plane? Where do you want to travel with Jinair airplane? Better. <웃음> 어디로 여행 가고 싶은 거냐? 뭐 진에어 비행기 타고. 안 되면 한국 음, 없어요. 없어? 맞아. <웃음> so you broke the record for CS, finishing the game in 1465 CS. Oh, uh, how do you feel? 뭐라 해야 되지? 난 한국말로 연해주고 응, 되게 뭔가 오묘했는데 그냥 내가 왜 여기까지 게임을 했지 그냥 I didn't know this like play like this for the wrong time and I was confused So yeah Hmm Then what are your tricks for farming so well? Tips! Farming <웃음> tips! Tip? CS farming Hmm I think, I think, I think. And who's the most noisy person of your team? Eh? Team? Team. Mm, gaming house? Gaming house? <laughs> noisy, loud. Ah, uh, here? No, no, no. House, house. house. Gaming house, you. Guys, in one. So loud, noisy. Oh, no. Um, T. Then what? What does Um T mainly talk about? Hmm, he's all day crying. Crying? Crying over what? As an AD carry pro gamer, what is an A tier champion in solo queue? Kalista. Mm. Any playing tips for it? Mm. Physical? Physical. Physical. <laughs> 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 Then is there any other player from other teams that you want to get closer to? I want to be closer with Core and KT. Yeah, I really like him. He's just the team score is just a fun player and he's a so good player so I want to be close with him. Mm. 역시나 엄지 선수가 영어를 너무 잘하셔서 심층 질문을 준비해 봤습니다. 준비되셨나요? 도대체 <웃음> 무슨 질문을 준비해 오셨길래 그렇게 막 심층이라고 또 한번 가 보시죠. 예. Yeah. And how would you like to define leadership? Leadership? <웃음> uh, I think just I don't have the leadership like other guys like Faker or but if you guys are seeing me for leadership I can't answer it. Mm. What is the most important thing in your life? Important thing and for fun and teamwork. That is my important thing. Okay. 
여기까지가 진에어 그린윙스의 엄티 테디 선수였습니다. 저희는 다음번에 돌아올게요. 안녕. 안녕. 네, 이제 신문 십담 이제 끝났는데 신문 십담을 해가지고 좀 테디 형도 오랜만에 좀 때려본 것 같아요, 사실. 그래서 좀 재밌었고 이번 개그로 제가 영어를 너무 못하는 거 알아가지고 원래 알고 있었는데 그렇긴 한데 그래도 영어 좀 공부 좀 해야 될것 같아요. 좋은 계기였던 것 같습니다. 여기까지 진해오리스의 엄티 대디였습니다. 안녕히 계세요.